Hey guys, James with Texted Life. Today we're getting into beekeeping. We're gonna be assembling our Flow Hive Classic, the one with seven frames. Um, we're really excited about this. We're really excited to have bees. So let's get to it. Here we have the short sides of the super box. Here are the short sides of the brood box. Here are the long sides of both the brood box and the super box. And here are various parts of the frames the display window for the super box, all of the screws and knobs that we need. Here's the screened bottom board, the queen excluder, and the inner cover. And here are all the pieces for the roof. There are a lot of pieces here, so let's just zip on right through this. If you're gonna be painting your hive to have different shapes and colors on it, I would recommend doing that before you put the whole thing together. We did it after and it was a huge pain. Here we are assembling the brood box pretty straightforward. We just have four sides that we need to put all those screws into. It's a really good idea to have a rubber mallet on hand for this part. Wood has a tendency to expand and contract, especially during international travel. You probably do want this to be pretty tight anyway. You really probably don't want other little critters getting in through the walls. Give it a little tippy tappy to get it all together. I don't think there were any specific instructions on the order to put in the screws. I just kind of chose a zigzag pattern to try to make sure it was all pretty tight. Be real careful about putting in the screws too far. The wood is pretty soft, so it's pretty easy to get the heads in too far. And here we are, one completed brood box. If you're gonna add any foundation to your frame, you should probably do it here. I don't think that you can add it after the frame is built. This is actually the final frame that I built. It took me a little while to get a system down for doing this pretty easily, so I don't want to show all my failures, so you just get to see the best one. I would recommend using black frame foundation if you're starting out like us. The black foundation makes it really easy to see the brood. We didn't know what the bee larvae looked like, so the black frames really just help make them obvious to us. I don't really have a lot else to say about frames, so I'm just going to spit out some bee facts. Did you know that the queen will only mate once in her life, and it is referred to as her nuptial flight? A queen can live about three to five years. The queen will not eat what the other bees do. She will be on a strict diet of what's called royal jelly. Ta-da, here's our completed brood box and frames. Rolling right into the super, you can see that these walls are a little different. This long wall has the observation window, so you can see how the bees are doing with honey production without disturbing anything. This short wall has the honey extraction window. I don't really know what it's called, but this is where you open it up to extract the honey without disturbing the working bees. Also, for some reason, this one was a little tighter to get on. This part is also not super interesting, so more bee facts. Drone bees are male bees, and they have one job and one job only. If you've ever had to have the talk about the birds and the bees, you could probably guess what that one job is. Drone bees will actually not mate with the queen from their own hive. The drone bees will go out and find what are essentially bachelor pads with drones from other hives. They will all hang out and wait for new queens to show up. In the world of bees, the female or worker bee will do all of the work to keep the hive in tip top shape. The first task that a worker bee has is to clean her own cell. Then she'll become a nurse bee and take care of the larvae in the hive. The very last and most dangerous job that the worker bee will perform is to become a forager. It is unfortunate, but it is likely that the final act of service a worker bee will do for the hive is while she's out foraging. Hey, look, something a little different than screwing wood together. This metal plate goes underneath the honey extraction window. We attach the adorable little knobs to the honey extraction window. The same type of knob for the observation window. And the same knobs for the honey extraction key window. I should really figure out the names of these things. This fancy little piece of wood combined with a screw and a spring will hold the honey extraction windows in place, but will make them very easily removable when you go to extract your honey. And these little knobs with that same screw and spring will hold the observation window cover in place. Here are the frames that the Flow Hive is all about. There are several pieces of plastic that create a grid very similar to honeybee specifications. 
The grid isn't quite complete though, which allows the bees to fill those gaps with beeswax. When the super is completely full of honey, you are ready to harvest. This silvery metal bar that comes with the honey flow is called the key. You use the key to break the little channels of wax, which allows the honey to flow down to the bottom of the super. They make a six frame and a seven frame version of the super, and we got the seven frame because we are greedy. We want as much honey as we can get. There are screws on one end of the frames that you can adjust to get a snug fit inside of the box. You want the frames to be aligned properly so that nothing can crawl between the frames to get in and out of the super. You can see the observation window at the bottom of the video. Taking the cover off gives you a really cool view of the bees while they are actively working to fill the super with honey. This part of the video is also not super exciting, but is still very important to see. You can see me adjusting each screw to make sure that the frame does not wiggle left to right. We are just starting this bee journey, but I imagine we'll need to adjust these screws throughout the season as things like temperature and humidity change. I also imagine that temperature and humidity is why the screw adjustment process exists in the first place and why the frames weren't just manufactured to fit tightly inside the box. Now we move on to the roof, which was shockingly the hardest part of the entire build. Not that the roof was difficult, it's just that you actually had to put forth some effort to make sure that everything lines up correctly. One of the gables is shorter tall-wise than the other one to account for the honey extraction keyhole. You have to line up the top of the roof yourself, which is a bit annoying. The Flowhive 2 seems to come with a tool to help you line this up a bit easier. Before I screwed anything down, I spent a good few minutes to try to figure out if it would be easier to start from one of the ends or the center. The center seemed a lot easier. Each roof piece has a little overhang for the next piece, so you can just push the next one right up to the previous one and then screw it down. This feels like a good time to say that I'm not associated with Flowhive at all. I'm just a regular guy whose wife desperately wanted bees, and so we picked this up from the website, and here we are. Alright, we have another minute to kill here, so back to the bee facts. Did you know that worker bees really only live about 5-7 to seven weeks? The drone bee, on the other hand, lives about 8-10 to 10 weeks. That hardly feels fair given that the worker bees are doing, you know, all of the work. But that's alright. In the fall, the worker bees will push all of the drone bees out of the hive to fend for themselves. In the fall and winter, there is a scarcity of resources, and the worker bees don't have time to be taking care of needs of all the drones. If something happens to the queen bee, like disease or injury, the other bees will actually take existing larvae and put them in what's called a queen cell, and feed them exclusively royal jelly to create a new queen. The world of bees is fascinating, and the more we learn about bees, the more that we are convinced that bees only exist because they're magic. Beekeeping is one of those hobbies that draws you in and you just end up learning stuff. Alright, now that we've got this nearly all assembled, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up to follow our journey of becoming the world's most mediocre beekeepers.